We come together on this beautiful Sunday in sixth Sunday in ordinary time, but for some of you who are, might remember in the good old days, today would be the starting time, uh, almost like a pre-Lenten preparation. It's 70 days before Lent, and we all know Lent is a wonderful time for us to go into the recesses of our heart, to meditate upon what really matters and what's really important, and particularly to see what we still need to do or areas we need to work on in order to build up our relationship with God. Our readings today are perfect for such a reflection as we hear Jeremiah remind us that we are fools if we trust in the work of our hands. We're fools if we trust in the things that the earth can produce. We're fools if we put all our trust in the here and now. And Paul echoes the same as he says that our hope is not in what we have now, which is perishable things, but our hope is in the gift of eternal life that Christ Jesus has promised us. And of course, Mark, in, the, uh, uh, in his reflections today, shares with us the blessings and also the curses of either being a good, faithful disciple of the Lord or one who is not being faithful, who puts more trust in themselves than in God. Our parish is doubly blessed this weekend as we have a marvelous uh, international speaker and musician to be with us to help us gear up for the holy season of Lent. I don't think that's what he had in mind when he came here, but that's what it's turning into. And I'm going to let our, our, our retreat master now share with you some things about himself, but also uh, what you can expect on the next three nights during our parish mission. So just join me in singing. I, I think you'll uh, recognize the song. It goes like this. Open my eyes, Lord. Help me to see. I gotta be honest with you, Father's working pretty hard on your behalf, but otherwise, it wasn't terribly impressive. So, uh, it wasn't that you didn't sing well, it's just that you did it without moving your lips in any way. I'm just saying that that's a special skill. So, try it in the lip moving way one time as best you can. Open my eyes, Lord. Sing so loud, people driving by just stare in amazement and go, they must have sold to the Lutherans. All right, that, that's the goal. All right. So open my eyes, Lord. Open my eyes, Lord. Help me to see. Help me to see your face. Open my eyes. Help me to see. Help me to see. Sing open my eyes. the cavalry coming over the hill right there that was very nice so uh i share one thing with you it was beautiful readings like father said and and a perfect day to begin a, a parish retreat or mission i i'll share one experience of my own life in 1999 a long time ago i i had the opportunity to meet pope john paul ii which was pretty much a highlight of my life i had always wanted to meet him he's really the only uh Pope that I could remember in my life until they started going like this, you know, but I, I, I don't have a memory of a Pope before him. And when they called and asked me to, to be part of a, he was on his way to Mexico City and they asked me to be a part of a, a weekend in St. Louis where he would have a, an event for young people and I was asked to be the MC and then a mass where I would sing one of the songs at mass. It was extraordinary I mean I and, and this priest in Rome calls and asks me to do this and then he says do you need to check your schedule I'm like 
no, Father, I, I don't. I, I'm going. I'm coming. You, you can count on me. I'll be there. You know, I, I don't know what's on that day, but as soon as you hang up, I'm moving it. You know, so don't worry. I'm, I just would love to meet the Holy Father. It's a great, it would be a great honor if I could meet him in person. And he said, that's easily done. We're all going to meet him in, the, in person. So uh, I got there filled with expectation. We had a little rehearsal the night before. It went great. And then they pulled me aside at the end and said, there is a problem with meeting the Pope. I'm like, oh, we don't get to meet the Pope? That's bait and switch. This is illegal in America, you know. And, and they, uh, they said to me, no, 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 we will all get to meet the Holy Father right there behind the stage. There will be a big receiving line. It's just gotten bigger and bigger as time has gone on. And now it's not just us, but the governor and the mayor and most of the St. Louis Cardinals are now in the line to me. I know, I never did like the Cardinals, and now they're bumping me, okay? So this is going to take 45 minutes. And they said, we just didn't expect this. What are all of the 20,000 people going to do for 45 minutes while this is happening? And we put our heads together last night and we came up with a solution. We feel that all we need is just one person from among us who could stay on the stage and sing and pray with the many people while the rest of us, you know, meet the Pope. And we think you are the perfect person. So take one for the team. This is where we're going, right? So I do this. I stay on the stage and sing. They meet the Pope. It was beautiful. I mean, when do you get to do a concert for 20,000 people? It's not an everyday experience. It went wonderfully. I wasn't bitter. You know, 50-50. I was a little bitter because they all met the Pope, except for me. Then he comes out on the stage, and I am as close as I am to the ambo right there where they read the readings. I'm this close to the Holy Father. The Pope just goes right there. I almost ran over there and just said, hey, white is your color. You look great. You know, I don't know. What do you say to the Pope? I didn't go over there, not because I didn't know what to say. I didn't go over there because they told us, pretend there's a line right here by your chairs, and if you cross it, we will shoot you. That's what they told us, right? So I did not cross the line. I stayed here. But as soon as he sat down, a little nun sitting next to me, Carmelite sister, brown habit, ran over there. S practically sat in his lap, kissed on his cheeks. I'm serious. She got a free rosary and a blessing, and nobody shot her. I'll tell you that. So I was trying to explain to the Pope with like my mind, you know, do not give her that rosary. She's a rule breaker. But he was very sweet to her and it made me almost want to go over there, but I didn't want to test it by being the second person. So I stayed put. It was a beautiful day. At the very end, the Holy Father stands up, says beautiful words and walks off the stage in that direction. He goes that way, which if they'd have known, they could have put me over there, but I don't know. They put me over here, and then he starts shaking everyone's hand and hugging everybody and giving out rosaries like it's a Catholic bookstore over there. And I just decide, I'm going. I'm going over there. You know, if they want to shoot, they can shoot. I don't believe it. I've been on the stage for three hours. They're not going to shoot me. So I ran over there to meet the Pope. They were in like little sections of chairs. They're small sections, maybe just 30 people over there total. But there was a little aisle. And I realized if I just went up the aisle and stood in the line, I'd, I'd meet the Pope, no problem. So I get over there, I'm almost to my spot. I'm feeling fairly confident that it's all gonna work out. And then, like three steps away, I get a shoulder in the rib cage, like I am being tackled by an NFL linebacker. I fall into a chair because I couldn't get to the floor because there was a chair there, fortunately. But as I hit the chair, I'm thinking, and I promise you would think this too, even as an adult, if you do think that you're being arrested on national television, I can tell you what your first thought's gonna be, because I know what mine was. Oh, my mom is gonna kill me. That's what I was thinking, right? So I turned to try to explain myself to the Secret Service, but it was not the Secret Service who knocked me to the ground, no. You know who it was, right? You do in your heart, you know. It was the nun, it was the nun. She, she saw me run and she took that as permission. She came right behind me, took me out, went in for double dips. I'm like, come on, you met him once, like be fair, you know? So she dropped down on her knees and grabbed his hand, which um, was traditional greeting of the Pope is to kiss his ring and that's what she was doing. 
And it was actually a bit fortunate for me because when she did that, it allowed me to um, essentially meet the Pope over the top of the nun. So I met the Pope while the nun was kneeling down, holding his hand. It did look, unfortunately, on television as if I knocked the nun to the ground. This was not true. It's very... De I mean, she deserved it, okay, first of all, but I did not knock her to the ground. She knelt down voluntarily. All I had to do was to make sure I had a moment to meet the Pope was just to kind of hold her down for a second so she did not stand up in the middle of it. But I did get to meet the Holy Father. And you know, cool thing, it took me a minute to put this together, but he grabbed my hand, the Pope, he's a saint now. This is a third class relic. And uh, he grabbed my hand and he just said, uh, oh, very nice. And then he walked by, you know, and, and uh, it took me a minute to realize that while he was meeting all of the Cardinals back there, um, that he must have glanced up at the screen and seen me playing and praying with the young people. And, and he just gave me an attaboy. I just got an attaboy from the Pope. You know, that was very, very cool. And uh, I share this with you because of what he said before he left, which turns out to be quite applicable to today. And he, uh, this is a direct quote. I have memorized it. He said, young people, because that was his audience, but true for all of us, okay? He said, young people, in the days and months and years ahead, for as long as you remember this day, remember that the Pope was here in the city of St. Louis to call the people of America to Christ. Christ is the light. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. On the edge of this city stands the gateway arch, which often reflects the sunlight in its many colors. In the same way, in a thousand different ways, you must reflect the light of Christ. Christ is calling you. The church needs you. The Pope believes in you and expects great things from you. Praise be Jesus Christ. And that was the end of the day. I've said it a thousand times. I said it this morning at nine o'clock and it still chokes me up. It was just so powerful. He was shaking when he said it, you know? And I can't really do it for you, but I can get you in the zone. You know, what was my favorite line? On the edge of this city stands the gateway arch, which often reflects the sunlight in its many colors. In the same, I'll do it, I'll do it for you. In the same way, way, in a thousand different, different ways, ways, ways. Right, that's good, right, right? You must reflect the light of Christ. He was shaking. He was so passionate when he said it. And uh, why would we have a, a parish retreat, a parish mission? Why would we be here for these next few days? Well, to remember who we are, to remember what we stand for, to remember whose we are, and to remember who we are called to be when we walk out of this church. You know, you can't open the news without seeing so many impossible to understand things. And I don't think the world is going to change because people randomly walk into the church. The world is going to change because we quite intentionally walk out of the church to be a light of hope and faith in a world that is desperate for it. To remember who we are, whose we are, and why we come here today. And there's always reasons not to come tonight or three nights in a row to church. You know, it does say in the catechism, if you come three nights in a row, you go automatically to heaven. So that's a good reason to come. It's, it's very fine print. Don't try to look for it. Just wait till I'm gone. Um, uh, but in all seriousness, there are plenty more reasons to be here. Each night a little different, and each builds on the, the one before, but come to one, come to all. It doesn't matter. I think we come as a community and see the face of Christ and, and, and help each other to be the face of Christ. So we'll sing a little and laugh a little and cry a little and play a little and pray a little together and help each other be who we are called to be. So it's a pleasure to be here with you. Come and bring someone who wouldn't come unless you brought them. That's our homework, right? Not only come, but bring someone. So sing it, I'll, I'll sing for you and then we'll sing Open My Eyes one more time. I'll sing first. And the last shall be first and our eyes are open and we'll hear like never before. And we'll speak in new ways And we'll see God's face In places 
we've never known. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Help me to see. Help me to see. 